My name is Nikki Lee Shipman and I'm a watercolor artist. And before we get started, I just want to flash up my studio setup. This is my studio. It's an at-home setup. This is the current project that I'm working on. It's a downtown scene of Detroit. And I also would like to mention that if you haven't seen the video before this one, um, it talks about supplies and technique and it's really helpful, especially if you're just starting out. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get into color mixing and color theory. So the next exercise that we're going to do is we're going to be making a color wheel. I'm sure you did this in school at some point if you took an art class. And this is one of my favorite exercises. And it's also one of the most important in painting, if not the most important in painting. Um, because it's going to teach us the balance of color and how we use color to create reality on a blank canvas like this. So I'll get much more into that later. Um, but what you're going to do is somewhere on your palette, you should have usually an ultramarine blue. Mine is over here and it's a deep dark blue. Um, if you just have maybe a Walmart palette, it's just going to be your darkest blue. So I have a couple different blues here and we're gonna go for the darkest one. That's gonna be your base. And everyone's might be a little different depending on the brand of paint you have um, and that kind of thing. And that's okay, it just, it'll affect your painting, um, but not in a bad way. It'll, it'll make them all unique. So we're going to lay down our darkest blue at the top of our wheel. And you can just make a circle or a square, that'll be good for us. And it's our solid blue, that's our ultramarine blue, is usually what it's called. Next we're going to do, um, so we're working through our primary colors here, it's red, blue, and yellow. So the next one we'll do our red. Um, on this palette, I have kind of a dark red here and then a cadmium light red. Um, we're gonna go with a, a true red. Um, this one is a little bit orange. This is a true red here. And again, my palette is going to be different than yours um, and that's not a bad thing. It's just kind of how it is. So we're gonna put our red, we're gonna make a triangle here. So make a triangle. Um, we're gonna put our yellow somewhere over here. So we've got our red square. And the last one is the yellow. Um, this is my brightest yellow. Just use your brightest yellow, whatever that is. And I believe this one comes on the palette that I showed you guys. This is a lemon yellow. Um, if you have a darker yellow than this, that's fine. You can use that one. Whatever your truest yellow is. We're gonna paint the yellow square. And now is kind of the fun part. Um, so we're going to be mixing some of these colors. We're gonna put two colors in between each of these. Um, and we'll start with our red and our blue. So we're going to mix red and blue. And for the first square towards the red, the one that's gonna go right here, we're going to put more red than blue. I suppose you'd call it, I don't know, red blue or something. So we're gonna put our red down. And then we're going to put maybe half the amount of our ultramarine blue. And the important thing is that you want to make sure that it looks more red, that this purple looks more red than it does blue. So right now it's kind of a true purple. I'd say it kind of looks more, a little more red, but I'm going to clean off my brush and we're going to put a little more red in it. And I, I do want it to look purple and that, that's looking a little too red. So I'm gonna go back with my blue and put a little more blue in it. And I'd say that looks pretty good. It's about what we had at first, but that's good, good enough for me. So we're gonna put down this square and this is our red blue. I suppose it's a violet, but it's it just has more of a red tint. 
And now with that same, the same paint color we just mixed, we're going to clean our brush, go back into our ultramarine blue, and we're gonna put more blue down and see how that took on a more blue color instead of red. We're going to paint this blue violet down and you start to see the color shifts here. All right, so we have red, red, blue, blue, red, and blue. And these are the building blocks of painting. So um, when, let's say we're painting an orange and we're painting the shadow side of the orange. I'm going to tell you that we have um, more of a red orange than a yellow orange. So I'm gonna start referencing these colors and I'll show you, I'll walk you through how to do it. But it's important to understand the difference between more blue violet or a more red violet. So now we're gonna start working from our red to our yellow. So we're going to put down some yellow paint. And when you're mixing colors, um, you actually usually mix from light to dark. So you're going to take the lighter color and put it down. So between red and yellow, yellow is lighter here. You can see that it's, um, it's brighter on the white. This is a much darker color than this one. See it against the white? This one has a much starker contrast than this one does. So when you're mixing colors, you usually put down your light color and then you're going to add some of your dark color. It's a lot harder to make a color from dark to light than it is light to dark. So we just made an orange and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we were to put our red down first, let's get a good amount of red. And then we were to add a little bit of yellow, I'll show you the difference. See how much darker that is? So we'll actually end up using both. Um, but that's the difference between when you add a dark color to a light color or a light color to a dark color. That's the difference. Um, so this is going to be our red orange, the one that I'm mixing right now. And we'll go ahead and put that next to our red because we're going to use both of these colors anyways. So it's an orange color and it has more red in it, as you can see. And now we're going to clean our brush and we're going to paint our yellow orange. I'm actually going to put a little more yellow in it, make it brighter. Mm, no, I would like it a little more red. So we're, I'm going to put a little more red back in to make it a little more orange. That looks good. So this is our yellow orange. And now we have a nice color shift from red to yellow. So these are called secondary colors. Um, I'm sure you guys remember that from school. So we have our primary colors that are blue, red, yellow, and then we have our secondary colors here. Um, and last but not least is green. So we're going to be mixing, um, we'll start with our lighter color, which will be our yellow. So we're gonna put down some yellow. And then we're going to take some blue. We're gonna clean off our brush. Always clean off your brush in between colors. It'll keep your paints clean. And I'm going to just add a tiny bit of blue to my brush. And we're gonna put it down in the yellow. And that will make a yellow green. So it's going to be more yellow than blue. And we'll go ahead and put that down. And last but not least, we will paint our blue-yellow. So 
we're just going to add a little more blue to what we already have here. And that will give us our blue, little yellow green. And if you want a deeper color, so that's the thing about watercolor and that's the first exercise that I showed you. See how the colors that I'm painting right now are a little bit kind of translucent? I can get a deeper color for this green just by um, adding more paint. So keeping the same ratio and just adding more paint. So I've cleaned off my brush and what I'm talking about is we'll pick up a bunch of yellow. So I'm going to really coat my brush with the yellow and we're going to lay that down. And it's nice and thick. You can see how, how much paint I just put down. And then I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to get a decent amount of blue, not too much blue because this is the darker color. It'll drastically change this color, but we'll get a good amount on there. And then we'll go ahead and go into our yellow and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is essentially close to the same color that we just did, but see how much more opaque it is. There's a lot more paint on there. And it's really just the density of the water that has made this difference. I don't know if you can see that. See the difference? There's less water in the one on the right and more paint. And you get a more deep, vibrant color. And that's gonna be really important when we're painting with watercolor. And some of, you'll find some of the pigments on their own. See how deep of a color this ultramarine blue is? That's really just because this paint pigment is on its own just a very dense mineral. Whatever it's made from is more dense than, say, this red. Um, all paints are usually made from minerals or a synthetic material, so whatever it's made from affects its um, opacity, I guess. And this yellow is actually a pretty dense yellow. Um, and it will also diff it will also depend on your palette. So um, depending on if you got it at Walmart or Michaels, it, it really, it's not necessarily the quality, um, it's just the effect that you're gonna get. But whatever you have is gonna be great. Um, don't feel like you have to spend more money. You can honestly work with any palette. The one that I started with is $12. So, um, you know, work with whatever set you have and, and we'll get going. This is our color wheel. And as we mix colors, I'll still walk you through mixing colors, um, but it's important to know that um, know how to mix these in between colors because we'll be working with them quite a bit. Um, the other thing to learn here is that when you're painting light, so let's um, let's say you have a piece of fruit and there's a lighter part and a darker part and it's the effect of light. That's what's making it shine on one side and then shadow on the other. Typically light is a yellow source. Um, so the sun is yellow or yellow orange. And the opposite of yellow is purple. So we're gonna look across our color wheel and we're gonna look at this blue violet or this red violet. And when you start using colors like this, when you start contrasting purples against yellows, that's when you get a lot of dimension and you really define objects um, when you start strategically using these colors against each other. So a red with a green or an orange with a blue. They are absolute opposites as opposed to this orange with this green. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're going to put down, we'll put down a little green maybe down here and then we're going to put down a little red next to it which is its opposite color a little red orange and you see the contrast i mean they are opposites 
as opposed to a green. I need to get more paint on my brush. So when it starts to get kind of pale and translucent, you just need more pigment. And then we'll put down an orange, which it's not its complement. And the contrast is a lot less. See that? See how they're closer to each other on the color wheel? They're not opposites. The opposites are directly across from each other on the color wheel. And the difference is that this line in between is not as stark with something that's not a complement. So we're going to be using color theory as we paint. I'll explain more as we go, um, but it definitely is something to think about and it is certainly the building blocks of painting, especially when you get into um, making large landscape paintings or painting objects. Um, so I really hope you guys like this video and you'll stay tuned with me for the next ones. Um, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day, you guys.